What's going on, everyone? Mike Singer and Tyler Horker with our Thursday post Marcus Freeman press conference reaction video. Lots of things to discuss, and uh, Tyler will break it all down for us. Please do hit the thumbs up on this video if you like what you hear. Um, or maybe if you don't like what you hear, but you still enjoyed the video. Um, and of course, subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can get all the latest Notre Dame football and recruiting updates. Um, Tyler will address first your shirt you're wearing, Wapu versus everybody. Now, I know when Notre Dame plays Navy, the media loves to talk about Navy prep, and that was definitely the theme in the, what, 15-minute Zoom press conference today. And a lot of players from the Walk-On Players Union, of course, that's what Wapu stands for, you know, this is kind of their big week. This is their big week, especially when you're going against a team like Navy that runs the triple option. Notre Dame literally recruits guys and brings them in as preferred walk-ons, walk-ons, whatever it may be. For this one week, Chase Ketterer is one of those guys out of New Prairie High School, really close by New Carlisle, Indiana. And another one of those is Justin Fisher, who went to even closer by Mishawaka High School. They both ran the triple option offense in high school, so – Chase Ketterer is handling the quarterback duties like he did last year. Justin Fisher has been the fullback. It's kind of a different deal when, when you go up against the triple option offense. And Notre Dame needs guys that know what they're doing to give them the right looks in practices. Otherwise, you get out there on the field Saturday and you're like, what the heck are these Navy guys doing? How do I stop this? So it is a big week. And Marcus Freeman mentioned earlier in the week that they kind of did some of this stuff way back in fall camp. They did it during the bye week. So it's a different deal when you're playing Navy, and it helps when you have some of these Wapu guys that are able to help you out a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. And I know Mark Sherman kind of talked about some of his experiences against Navy in 2017. What, what, what would that have been? Was he at Cincinnati at that? Was that yeah, point? that was the first year he was the defensive coordinator, I think. 596 yards. 69, 569, get it right. Marcus Freeman get, got it right. He remembers. Nice. Yeah, uh, so hopefully uh, Notre Dame's <laughs> defense fares a lot better uh, this time around. I mean, they should. I mean, it's it, it's for me, it's been a theme of the week of like Marcus Freeman's coached against Navy so many times. He played against, you know, coached against triple option. Al Golden, I mean, you got to think about when he played college ball triple options so many I mean, it was very prevalent I, I, he played yeah. you know coach against georgia tech so many kind of times he's that temple coach against navy this notre dame front sevens played against navy i mean i'm just i i personally think it's going to be a bloodbath i really do. i think notre dame maybe not a bloodbath that's a little extreme but i think notre dame last year, right it, it sort of felt like a bloodbath but it wasn't it, notre dame was a little nice to them in in the way that they beat them down 34 to 6 navy only ran for 166 yards it, it was thorough domination yeah, it was just an easy kind of cruise along win. I think that will be the same for Notre Dame this season. Brandon Joseph was listed um, as doubtful per Marcus Freeman. Doubtful's basically out. What's the point of doubtful? I mean, yeah. you're you're he, so we we highly, you know, he's highly unlikely to play. Don't expect him to see the field. Um, and he really hasn't played much safety these past couple weeks at all, right? Tyler's just been a, a punt returner. There's been a couple instances where he got a little banged up. Obviously, this past week was the ankle sprain, so he didn't play much in the second half against Clemson. And then I think there was an, another game. Was it UNLV maybe on the road before the Syracuse game? Because he obviously played a lot against Syracuse. He was big in that game with the INT return. Right. But, yeah, as you get later in the season, some of the guys like that aren't able to hold up. It's one of those things with Joseph. And, look, Navy's going to throw the ball like five times in this game, maybe. So – from a passing defense perspective, Joseph isn't needed. I get that safeties are needed to run up and help and fill some lanes against the run-heavy offense like the triple option, but Notre Dame has guys that can do that. DJ Brown, Houston Griffiths will, Griffith will get in there, Ramon Henderson, Xavier Watts even. You're going to see a lot of rotation at safety. Notre Dame will be just fine. But the one thing that does make a difference is you mentioned the punt return. It's a return to Matt Salerno, a former Wapu Nation guy himself who got a scholarship this year. If Navy is in a situation to punt and if Notre Dame doesn't block the punt, then maybe we see the ball in number 29's hands this weekend. Yep, good job remembering the pick six against Syracuse. I forgot, but he yeah, was UNLV. I don't think he played much safety. Yeah. He was just kind of returning punts and then, of course, Syracuse. But then I don't think we saw him last week, but he's just kind of returning punts against Clemson. So, yeah, he's been dinged up. Um, and doubtful, so you're not expecting him to play in Matt, Matt Salerno, punt returner. 
One player who definitely won't be playing for Notre Dame moving forward is Joe Wilkins, a uh, upperclassman receiver, someone who's just battled injuries. And Tyler, I thought it was interesting when Marcus Freeman was kind of asked about his transfer. Freeman, in a nice way, was basically saying our coaches have to put the best players on the field to win, and he's not it. He didn't say that last part, but that's that's you know pretty strongly what he alluded to. Yeah, and I mean, hey, that's that's just being honest. And you can read between the lines when something like this happens, especially this time of year. You kind of read between the lines with the Jacob Lacey thing way back a month and a half ago. We laid out the numbers in one of these videos where he was clearly the third guy in line behind Jason Adamolola, Howard Cross at defensive tackle. So he said, you know what, I'm done. I'm going to go do this elsewhere. Later in the year, it took a little longer for Joe Wilkins to get to that point. But, I mean, people who watch Notre Dame every single week, they they didn't see number five out there a whole lot. And he played a little bit, but I, I think he thinks that he can be a guy that's catching passes, scoring touchdowns. He was that guy for a brief blip at, here at Notre Dame. But at the end of the day, sometimes for guys like that, it just doesn't work out. And Marcus Freeman said, hey, he gave it his all. He gave his best. He worked hard in practices. In fall camp, I saw that. I thought that he was going to be a guy that could contribute this year. Didn't turn out to be the case, and Marcus Freeman wishes him well. So he's played in five games this season, so he can't – is redshirt – I mean, he's and he's played in five seasons, so I don't know what his future but looks like. Maybe it's that COVID year that he's hanging on to because he would have played in that he one, right? Sixth year? I don't know, yeah, because I'm seeing – 2022 he's played in 20 he's had 27 snaps he's played in five games he's played 65 snaps last year 186 in 2020 81 in 2019 maybe 2018 year was a was was maybe he gets I I don't know but I'm I'm guessing if he entered the portal he gets another year but man it's like that's that's gonna be a sixth year of playing for him um so yeah good luck to Wilkins I think he can be a dude somewhere I, I I've believed in him but yeah just hadn't worked out at Notre Dame um Personal importance of this game to Marcus Freeman. This was your question, I believe, was one of the first or second of the press conference with Freeman. Tell us about that, Tyler. Yeah, so for those who aren't aware, Marcus Freeman's father is a 26-year Air Force veteran. So Marcus Freeman is a, a military kid, as some like to say. Grew up with it, grew up around it. It means a lot to him. Obviously, this is the Naval Academy, but all of those branches are big. And this is Veterans Day. It's Veterans Day weekend, so... Marcus Freeman just said, hey, th this game's a little bigger than football. I think everybody that's watching this is a big enough Notre Dame fan to understand the history of this rivalry and the way that Notre Navy helped Notre Dame kind of stay on its feet during World War II and, and, and in the years after that. Notre Dame needed some help. Navy said, hey, if, if you let us send some of our troops over there, then we, we can help you out in that way. So it's just kind of one of those cool things where college football intersects with real life and – I mean, that's real life stuff if you go back to World War II. And it's just cool to see that it's hung on all the way until 2022. I know some people are like, get Navy off the Notre Dame schedule. But, I mean, it's something that's been going on for almost 100 years. And it's something that I can see continuing to stay just because of all these different ties. What do you mean college football is not real life? You don't mean Drew Pine's passing percentage is not the life or death situation for, for all of us? Come on. Come Seems on. like it is with the way the message board reacts and Twitter and all those things, right? <laughs> All right, Notre Dame Navy, 12 p.m. Eastern Time, ABC, m and Bank Stadium in Baltimore. I think that's kind of a cool thing that hasn't been discussed at all is Notre Dame yeah. playing in another NFL stadium. That's um, what Notre Dame does, right? It, nobody else in the country does it like Notre Dame in terms of going to all these different places to play. Soldier Field last year, of course, playing in Vegas. Now we're playing in the home of the Baltimore Ravens. So, yes, yeah, I think that's kind of a, a cool side note. So that's going to do it for this video. Head to bloomandgold.com, $10. Get you access through the start of next football season. Hit that thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and we'll catch you guys next time.